Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2, and it doesn't get much more professional than the Terran player on the top right, the world champion of StarCraft 2, the Royal Rotor, the normal man. It's Oliveira. And one of the top tier players he beat on that iconic road, I think will be eternally looking to get some revenge, the smiling assassin. It's Hero. We're in the Korean StarCraft League Grand Finals, a best of five between these two. Kind of a, a repeat of history here. And if you're looking to see a great face-off, if you want Hero, you know what? If you want Hero to get some revenge. I mean, they've played before this, but we're going to pretend this is the first time. Some revenge. Make sure to like and subscribe. All right. If we get 1,000, Jimmy, what a, what a, just give me the... 1,043 likes on this video. We've made it so far, but I'm, I'm upping it again. And I'll cast another series. Probably do it anyway, but... Uh, but if you want Oliveira to win, I want you to do the same. Because much like in StarCraft, the outcome is muddy. It's hard to tell who's going to win um, or what anything really means. And uh, the real key is if I just continue talking long enough, eventually I'll trail off into a point that I can segue into actually talking about the game. And no one will remember this meandering path that the Reaper has taken around the map, dodging that first adept, getting back into the main where he may very well... No! Second adept shuts down the Reaper, and he won't be able to see that first Stargate. As a Whittle Mine is on the field. Do we want to play the everyone's favorite game? No. no it's right there. There you can see it. Find the Whittle Mine. Ah. Uh, ho, ho, ho. So the Whittle Mine won't lock on until the Adept completes the shade. But Hero, not going to fall for that one. Grenade. Bounces around the probe. And jumps up into the main, does the Reaper. No, body blocking is the Adept. And yet again, stuffed before it can get into vision range of that Stargate. Hero has near-perfect vision and has denied it to Oliveira. Here comes the Oracle, trying to burn its way in. SCV is pulled off the line. Citizens arrest, but Oliveira just dancing around. The Oracle already 4 HP. One stray bullet from one of these Marines could knock it out of the sky. <sighs> oh, come on. I guess that works too. I was like, all right, where are we going next? Nope. Don't let the widow mine hit you on the way out, says Oliveira. Um, but of course, Hero could not hear. The Oracle knocked out of the sky. Oh, that has to hurt. He thought he got out. He was specifically looking for it. Another widow mine will burrow. Oh, the positioning is not great for Hero. Loses six probes. The mine will be taken out, but trying to get away with the, the Marines and the Medevac. Oliveira off to a, a violent, yet effective start. The Widow Mines finding connections and knocking Hero back economically. Now 39 to 38 workers, which actually should put Oliveira in a pretty comfortable position with the existence of mules worth about five SCVs of mineral money apiece for their short but very productive lives. All right, three racks. Load it up. Triple threat in the production tab. Stim, combat shield, plus one infantry weapons. On the other side, hero going for the mech toss. Compass all, another one! Widowman slams the point home. SCV, a casualty of war. Oh, I was making sure Oliver didn't kill his own SCV. Not quite, not yet. But finding the spots. Robotics Bay is done. Is it Colossus? It's a supply blast. <laughs> Colossus it is. From Hero. <clears throat> Going straight into that anti-biocomposition. The Colossus might be a fragile um, unit when, when the bio units get close, but there is really no better tool for complementing the Phoenixes in the early game. If you're able to get a couple Colossi out, especially with extended thermal lance, I'm going to try this. All right, I saw a suggestion. I don't like it, but I'm going to try it because it's worth a shot. Extended Thermal Lance, or ETL. So once those ETLs are on the field... Nope, nope, don't like it. Just say Lances. Thermal Lance. I don't... 
I'll extend my thermal lance for you know. Let's not. All right. That's, that's another lawsuit waiting to happen. And that <clears throat> Oliveira on the way across the map with a very capable bio army. Only a single colossus on the field. It's thermal lance at standard length and a handful of sentries trying to box out for now but there's very little else here in fact Oliver probably could stim split and, and jump on this army but not going to risk it working his way around medivac's threatening a drop the plus one about to complete they're just waiting out that triple threat hero doing his best to play some aggressive defense box out the medivacs make sure that there is no possibility to drop towards the main but unfortunately Oliveira took the scenic route here and it will pay off the detour now the armies are all over the place but this for hero does not bode well there is enough energy for a recall into the main but the army's already established here the pylons can be taken down and with them all of the production four gates and a stargate hero with a half-hearted base trade the sentries are wandering. Hello, you can't know, sir, sir. You can't be in here. I well. So this is now happening. We stumbled directly into a full-on base trade. It's a calamity in game one, where both players are fully capable of obliterating the production of their opponents and have quickly done so. And a nexus has already a nexus has already begun in Oliveira's natural. Whereas Oliveira, his command centers are headed out. <laughs> no, I don't know how many are going to get away as the Phoenixes can, of course, chase them down. This poses a very... Hero has handled this very well, I think. He pulled his probes in time. Oliveira, where are the SCVs? Oh, wait, the SCVs are gone. Are we just going to... Oh, my God. Where are we going? What is happening? He needs to save that last command. Well, Oliver is enough to build a new one, but, you know, this is why you always buy used. Lightly harassed by Phoenixes. But otherwise good as new, that orbital command. All right. Um, excuse me. Ah. Uh, well, a lot of the SCVs cowering behind this supply depot. The ETL is not able to reach them back there. As I don't think Hero noticed. Plus one armor may finish despite the best efforts of the probes. Wow, what a me what an insane. And I, I don't use that term just for clickbait, but also for accuracy. What madness. And the army supplies are almost even. Unfortunately, that widow mine. Is there, is there an armory somehow? No. He's gonna hallucinate some phoenixes. Use them to draw more mine shots. Beautifully done. Only one more mine remains. And here we go, base trade volume two. But ever, but the stakes have been raised and the supplies and the depots have been lowered. The probes trapped in. A recall to the last nexus. He tries to jump on top. He got really dramatic about it. Is it gonna be enough? He picks up. The, there was a, that's it, it's over. Oliveira surrounds the nexus at his natural and knocks out the army. Sweeps him away. What a decisive game from both sides. That was a, that was a mess. That was a, a absolute disaster piece. And I loved every second. Well, starting around the, the seven minute mark when they started base trading. Before that, it was pretty generic, but suddenly. I, <laughs> Oliveira's long distance drop, taking the detour that Apple Maps sent him on all the way into the main precipitated one of the most ridiculous yet decisive base trades I've ever seen, especially recently. But, much like their exchange in in, in the I Am Katowice World Championships, um, Oliveira just manages to come out on top. He, he had an objective at each moment. He knew what he wanted. Hero was a quarter step behind, I feel, on each part of it. And Terrans are well suited in in the cowardly fashion they, they usually are. Uh, they're well suited to uh, picking up and literally just leaving their base behind. And no matter how many probes come in and slap down next eye, well, 
Also, those SCVs coming down from the main to block in the probes. Like, I didn't even have time to, to work that into the commentary, but I'm thinking about it now, that last fight. The SCVs that survived in the main came down and blocked the probes from escaping. I don't think that was the uh, game-changing difference, but it was certainly a moment. A moment worth men mentioning, as we have several moments to spare at the beginning of game two. Oh, well, how are we going to follow that one up? Probably, probably similar games. That was short and sweet. Decisive. Honestly, I don't think either player minds playing those sort of games. They're over pretty quick. Uh, Dark's not here. On the bright side, Dark's not here. For either player. Both of them have had knockdown, drag out, 40 minute games. An hour long series with Dark's. I, I say hour, 40 minute game and hour long series because then he proxy hatched two games in a row or Nidus and it was over. I'm just recounting history. Hero with a forward battery and a Twilight Council. Very early. No scout Protoss. Is that legal? No scout. Nobody's scouting, all right? At this level, you don't need to scout. Now, it's a bit of a gamble on both sides, but... But a bit more isolationist after that experience. Oliver is doing a one base tank push. Like, well... Okay. This is... So, Olivera is doing the build that I got to Platinum with in Wings of Liberty. Back in the day, um, probably, uh, well, he's, he's building, no, 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 about the same. Well, back in the day, most of the maps, uh, had your opponent's main base closer by a scrap station, um, is a notable example, where your opponent's base was closer if you flew there than if you walked, by a large margin. So, the build I learned when I was a Silver League Terran was, here's what you do, you get uh, Barracks Factory Starport, you get Siege Mode, two Siege Tanks, two Medivacs, no Reactor, you just build them one at a time, and then you just slam down a couple Siege Tanks behind your opponent's mineral line, and because everybody, including pros, had like 70 APM, okay, not quite, but usually it worked. I remember winning like two-thirds of games. For, for a week or two until people started figuring out how to do basic defense. But we'll see if Hero has figured out how to do basic defense because right now it's not looking so great for him. Blink is 90% done, but 100% not going to finish. It's Olivera. <laughs> Olivera takes the frontal version. You don't even have to research siege mode anymore. And that's two. And that's two right there. Okay. Um... No, don't you dare check the time of this video and say, wow, I wonder how many bonus games are in this one. I consider every game a bonus game, right, Jimmy? But we do have something lined up, right? Okay. <sighs> oh, like and subscribe for more bonus games. Or not bonus games, you know. That's the key, is we don't actually tell you. And uh, that way you're surprised. Otherwise, it would not be a help anti-spoilers, would it, very much. Anyways, I can guarantee you there's at least a game three, and we're going to bring it to you now. We're all headed across the map. Through the bubula, the bone trench. A lot of bones in that. No, don't do it again. They can't do the bit every time somebody goes through the bone trench. Only when they drop the rocks on it. I've always been amused that the Cyber Corp actually blocks off this whole area. I guess it makes sense. The most efficient Reaper wall. I'll allow it. All right. Myself, not a huge fan of the Reaper walls. Not a huge fan of Heroes walls in general. Heroes open, open borders policy has not treated him well, especially against the Zerg, because the Zerg aren't sending their best. They're sending Zerglings. They got Banelings. Now, Terrans, their only melee unit. Um, might be fierce, but isn't nearly as dangerous, the SCV. So, not walling off. In fact, walling off against Terran, as we saw last game to an extent, is something of a liability, since almost all of their units are ranged, some of them very much so, siege tanks. Uh, the wall can be used against you, because when you're coming out of it, you're coming into a concave, now we get into geometry lessons, and that's a sign I should stop, so... 
What's it going to be this time? We never got to see Blink. His eyes were closed before he could even attempt it. That, I don't even know what, ha well, Hero didn't scout. And not scouting is for Terrans. Okay? So, Oliver didn't scout, Hero didn't scout, Oliver does a one bit. I don't know if he did that because he saw no probe scout. I don't think so, but I don't have any sort of guarantee. I love the idea that he's like, no probe? All right, one base cheese, baby. Let's go. Works on the ladder. It, it really did feel like that, though. So that's a that's a world champion mindset right there. If he doesn't see it, go fucking kill him. Classic tactic. All right. Now something a bit more familiar. We got the two wrecks. Expand. A much more bio-heavy play. Not the uh, factory for... There was also, of course, a probe scout here. <laughs> I don't think we'll go without that for quite a while. And... ba 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 blink <clears throat> ba 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 blink It wasn't funny the first time. It was about the equal amount of funny the second time, I think. But, uh, we'll see. Same goes for the blink upgrade. Hopefully this time we get an opportunity to see it. Um, puns intended as... Uh, oh, that was um, a bit uh, upsetting. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> he goes, uh, what? Reaper slides by. Cool guys don't look at pylons. No, he saw it. He knows what's going down. Or uh, I would suspect Dark Templar. <laughs> Honestly, but Blink is definitely on the table. Well, Blink is the most likely, but DTs could be mixed in. That's the that's the more real concern. But as Terran just hold on to a couple scans, I don't think Oliver is too afraid of it. Oh my hero, hero! Was Adept dying so dramatically when Hero let them shade through directly into the army? But here comes some stalkers. The Spylon taken down. He's gonna pretend that that probe's still hanging out. Just like, it wasn't me, bro. It was my brother. Brobius. <sighs> Take it up with him if you got a problem. Stop. 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 I don't... Wow. Um. I don't know, hero. That's not quite enough. The grenade coming through. Most importantly, Oliver is gonna confirm. No sort of extra shenanigans, just a bunch of blink stalkers. Gets a probe. Plus one, e infantry weapons on the way. We got Stim now completed. Oliver in a pretty nice spot to defend against the blink. Always dangerous. But with a couple siege tanks and a good setup here. Bunker at the front. I'm hard-pressed to see Hero breaking him with uh, those Blink Stalkers. He's got War Prism now, but... Ooh. Storm. I don't think that's for Archons. He is getting charged, but... A bit of a storm warning. Seeing a slight resurgence. Astray has been using a lot of storm lately. Uh, max packs occasionally, definitely not as much. Protoss always trying things, seeing if something sticks. He ha he worked in one High Templar, but he hasn't yet. He has two hundred. There it is. It begins. Oh my! The recall. You should have plenty of time. Yeah, he's out of there. But of course, seeing the recall is important, as now you know for the next minute and a half or so, you got some space to move on the map. And honestly, the next minute is when Oliver should be putting himself out there. He's got two medevacs. He's got Stim already done. Combat shield plus one on the way. And about to complete right alongside those medevacs. So there's no better time to put yourself out there. Of course, he doesn't know if, if Hero has invested in a, a third nexus yet. He's going to assume so, and he assumes wrongly. As that's exactly where Oliver is going to be headed. But there is no third nexus. In fact, Hero looks like he's trying to pretend like there is one. Having some units out here. Yeah, he's he's pre-flanking with the storms. 
in the prism. The Templar has not been spotted. It doesn't have energy. He gave away the Templar, but look at the back! The storms wash over the army. Even an Archon. Very cute there. He may save the Archon. It's being targeted. Gets it. Widowmind will burrow. Getting some damage done. Not a not a decisive victory for Oliveira, but a victory. Uh, I mean for Hero here. Not a decisive victory for Hero, but it's definitely a victory. He does critical damage. He wipes away 23 Marines. Uh, and gets a couple tanks and Widowmans as well. So that will slow down a lot of Oliveira's momentum. And uh, slowing down the momentum and maintaining that warp prism will be the springboard towards another attack. Hero has decided two bases is all he needs as he juggles the immortals into the main. All right, he's not he's being quite hasty about this. He does. I saw a bunch of charge lots ready to swing in. Still, oh, several widow mines. Mm, I don't think. Oh, Hero splits off a few zealots. The sacrifice is not in vain. Beautiful storm, but loses the prism. Possibly the most important unit, even over the High Templar. I believe he has one more. Beautiful storm. Category five comes in, devastating the Terrans. And, well, losing the prism means no close warpings. He still has that proxy pylon. But once again, a bit of the eh, 20 SCVs down. I think he's doing it. Okay, the Widowmon's taken out. There's still an observer. Ghosts are on the field, though. Throws the EMP, wipes off the shields, and just like that. Olivera turning it around. Oh, the slow warping of the Zealot. But there's still enough stalkers around. There's not enough units here. Loses one medevac. This is turning from a slight defense into a crumbling one. As Hero is still up in his face. Continues waving Zealots in front of the army. Eating the Widowmine hits. The medevacs are running out of energy, and we're running out of medevacs in general. He lost several during that fight. Vikings on deck. War Prism reinforced. Hero is not leaving. This game will end. Either Hero gets cleaned up, or Olivera gets cleaned out. <sighs> 33 SCVs left. A tenuous position. That's enough, but barely. Especially if Hero's going to stay on these two bases. Now, Oliver doesn't know that for sure. He can only pray. At this point, you can only hope that he hasn't managed to get a third. Because there's nothing you can do about it. The force fields, the bottom of the ramp. Not sure who they're helping more here, as usual. Zealot, very adamant about getting involved. Widowmind's not quite able to connect. No more force fields for now. But the Templar have the energy for Storm, and they are more than willing to use it. Olivera forced to tap out. As Hero finally takes one back. Hero leans on the two base and eventually washes away Oliveira in another action-packed, high-energy, puns intended game. Oh, these two just going at it. Hero not willing to just sit back in macro. Oliveira has already brought the cheese out as well. So, Jimmy, can we get... It's not just going to be three games. No, you were right. Instead, game four. Hero showing signs of life. Honestly, game one... Well, game one only happened the way it did because Hero was entirely out of position. It was on Hero to keep track of the medevacs, and he simply didn't. Which made for one of the most fun and uh, explosive base trades. Game two was the... Just no scout everyone into I can't I can't believe Olivera just one base tank pushed. Right. That's why I was doing that whole diatribe about uh Wings of Liberty. Cause that's like how simplistic, how old that style. Just just show up with one base tanks. Yeah, just go for it. And hit them before blink. How do you deal with blink stalkers? Don't let them. Oh thanks, Twitch chat. Ah. <sighs> oh. Sir. You can't come in here. This is our mineral line. We don't like your cat. All right, yeah, get out. Recalled home. Hero showing a remarkable amount of caring for his probes.
A reaper coming across. Yep, that's a pylon. Looking to see what comes down, whether it's a stalker or an adept. It's almost always an adept, but the timing, you can get a lot of details from it. Kind of dance around to the side. Split the difference. Really? There's a lot of poker going on there. Will the adept commit to the shade? We'll it assume it's going to come back in. Uh, I mean, the stakes aren't particularly high, but... For hero, they are. Where, if Olivera gets in when the adept is at the other base... One! Mentally, super annoying. Super annoying. Don't undervalue that. All right. Now, it's so annoying. Two, just knowing whether it's Stargate or Twilight before the units show up is a significant uh, informational coup for, for Oliveira. Being able to set up your bunkers, your siege tanks, or even going siege tanks, because you know, indeed, it is a uh, blink, is a big deal. Um, and, and that one extra siege tank could be all the difference in losing outright to blink or shutting it down. Would have mind scampers out. Menacing, well, not really menacingly. Shamelessly. I, th I like that. Oh, is he going to do it? Did he? Okay, he did it. I don't know why the camera. We couldn't watch him do it. He timed it out perfect. We look away because I didn't think he would do it. No, I did. It was a quirk of the camera. But. Oh, God. You filthy Terran. He gives up the adept. He says you're the sacrifice. The adept. Which costs 50 minerals more than the little mine will die. But that means the stalkers will be able to fight. Already four probes down. Blink. Still far enough out that Oliver can just head on out. And doubles back. The main base is just so huge. It's like it's like somebody just hanging out on your your backyard. Uh, ever look in your backyard and see a bunch of marines dropping out of a medevac? I'd go back inside. You ever look in your backyard and see a bunch of dudes with drugs and guns just wandering around? I see you've met my neighbors. No, my yard isn't that big. War prism. On the way. Going to enclose or, or close. No, open. That's the one. That's the one. Open up. Warp into some more stalkers. And, well, there's one tank. There's a raven. There's a viking. Which seems a little light on the defense. And this is why, if you know it's blink, you don't necessarily want to go widow mine drop. As you simply don't have those siege tanks in a very timely manner. Wow, Oliver has, like, nothing here. Little does Hero know, I think he could blink on that tank, at least for now, until that second tank comes up. Where are you going? The Observer sees nothing. Okay, now it spots it in the bunker. Thanks, rotating around. They're both playing this game of positional chicken. Oh, the Adept Shade, though. Gets a scout. The siege tank is ready. Hero again! Forging the storm hammer. Right. Stalkers at the back. Yep, good micro. Kills a few marines. Pretty fun. Here we go again. Like, can psionic lightning strike twice? I don't see why not. Yet again. Olivera has a two-base bio build. Very focused on, on mass bio units. Nothing that particularly deals well with Storm. And his economy isn't so overwhelming, he can just magically get ghosts. We will see. But keeping up the pressure, Hero has decided just leaning on Olivera before he can really get anything going. Or, or before he gets a, at least three base economy is the key part. Is he going to wait for him to move out? He knows medevacs are on the way. 
Or does he try to slam the point home before even Barracks 4 and 5 are online? Warps in another round of Zealots. There's just one siege tank, a single bunker. Looking very lonely right now. Plus one isn't quite done yet. Psy Storm though very much is zoning out the prism for now, but he goes onto the high ground and storm down. I have the high ground, Oliveira. Where is your god now? And Hero just wipes the field yet again. There's there's not remote. It's it's over. That's it. Okay, well. Has Hero solved Protoss versus Terran? Just build Storm. No problem. All of Air been caught off guard. I don't think he expected it again, because it still is. It's becoming a much more common build, obviously, but it still is uh, an outlier. But wow, it just worked. Well, that is kind of how Olivera's build felt in, in game two, but the table turned again, or stayed where it was turned. I don't, wherever the table, it's pointing towards hero. You know what else is pointing towards hero? The cheese ladle. As he dips in and pulls out a gateway. In game five, we're going to the ace match. It hasn't been too long to get here. In this Korean StarCraft League finals. By the way, before we get any, we bite any deeper into this cheese. Oh my God, such a cheesy series. I love it. Um, Before we bite any deeper into this. Uh, make sure to check out the description for the Korean StarCraft League. This is put on by Dave Testa and Chicken Man. Um, Community Titans. And also you via Patreon. Um, well, and me. Because you guys support on Patreon directly and liking the videos as well. Um, uh, another tournament for these top tier players. Even outside the GSL, which unfortunately doesn't run. It's not 2010. We can't hear Tasteless ruining his voice, casting terrible Code A players playing TVT six hours a day. Um, but we can have another top tier tournament where we see the great players. And and the Korean StarCraft League just means it's held on the Korean server. Of course, players like Astrea and, uh, and Oliveira are playing not limited just to Koreans, but just a convenient time and tournament for them. What is this, though? What are you doing? Uh... Oh, hero. <sighs> Wait, was this? He looked for something. He's looking around. He does double zealot proxy gate. Oh, this is pretty filthy. And there's a reactor and the, there's nothing here. Oliveira, gonna see it. There's a Reaper. The Reaper can technically kill both of these. Here comes the Adept, which is gonna make things infinitely more difficult. SCV can, well, he's gonna need to repair. Building a bunker here. Gonna take a lot of damage from the Adept. First Marines are coming out. Hellion on the way. Reaper taking a hit. Dodges the second. Depot, you don't want to let those ones in. All right, they're very mean. He canceled the command center, of course. It looks like Oliver will hold the depot. I can't believe it's come to this. He canceled the bunk. <laughs> Wiggles the shade. Let me in! Not this time. I've met your family. They're not very nice. Two adepts. Banshee on the way. So again, it's going to be a full on one base cheese off. As well, Hero technically has two bases. Olivera was knocked back to one. He's just fighting with it. Well, the Zealot comes in. That's the biggest danger. Reaper targeted down. Grenade from the grave. Martyrdom perk. Adept heading into the main. Gonna get a full scout. Might as well complete it. SCVs have to be pulled. Some of them already bruised from the shenanigans earlier. The, the bruised SCVs pulled off the line. 
kills the adept, but he spots the tech lab starport. He's going to be expecting a raven, I think. Banshee's on the table, but is there a shield battery? There's a shield battery in the main, so... Uh, he's got some basic defense here. Here comes Olivera, bringing some of the tech boys. Five of them will... We'll, Olivera incidentally see the proxy gate here. This is pretty... <sighs> All right. Um... Well... Stalkers. But he has vision of the mine. Is there energy for a scan? Well, the Banshee's headed towards the main. Hero should have the defense there. Oh, it's coming together very well. The reverse sweep is looking good for the Korean Protoss. Hero has everything he needs to pull this together now. He has the economy. He has the units. He has map control and vision. A scan. Ooh, that one hurts. Do you pull them all? Just as these boys got back home? Yeah, he's like, come on, boy. <laughs> Yeah, a few more! We haven't met our recruit. We don't have the recruitment quota. And the Observer will see all of it. All right, straight out of Wings of Liberty. The 1-1-1 tank push with Banshees. Here we go. Hero is going a lot of different directions right now. He, he did build the Twilight. He built... Oh, he's chrono-boosting a supply. Not he only has one shield battery. At the natural. Oh, those tanks are so precious. But you can't be cowardly with them either, like... No, oh, the Banshees give some extra vision. When do you siege? When do you siege? He sees the shield battery. Is it too late already? Here come the Stalkers. Shield battery overcharge. Blinking back into the overcharge. Hero will take a lot of damage, but he only took out one of the tanks. Banshee's going to work. Oh, wow. It's very stressful right now. Olivera, that's just not that many units. No blink, though. He has to use the prism. Three Banshees is a lot of damage output. The SCVs are actually quite critical in being able to repair these units, as are the shield batteries for exactly the same reason. Whoever's able to outlast in this fight, and Hero clearly has the advantage as time goes on. If we get to another overcharge, well, that's probably lights out for Olivera. He's going to look for the NG Bay block. The Immortals are targeted onto the Siege Tanks. The Banshee's getting some work done. Second tank taken out, though. Nothing left to stop the Stalkers. GG! Hero completes the reverse sweep in this Lactose Intolerant Finals. Finally, Hero drives him out. Well, actually, no. Oliver didn't cheese him. Hero cheesed him first. He did a proxy gate. It's just... Uh, <laughs> oh... Well, that was a fun one. Hero takes it. The reverse sweep, three to two. Uh, I'm sure that one felt good. And I certainly enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you been enjoying the commentary. Uh, how many, Jimmy? 1,043 likes. Wake up, it's the end of the video. Don't let the loco video autoplay. I cast the same series just last week. Probably. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. Uh, thank you for watching. Good luck, have fun. Have fun. And don't forget to smile.